Good afternoon. We're going to get started here on our Sonar webinar. Uh, my name is Brad Ganane. I'm a Sonar account executive, and we'll also have Brad Hill, one of our senior data scientists, joining us for to give us a few insights into some of these um, charts and heat maps throughout this webinar. Um, we will be starting the webinar off examining some tender rejection indices in different markets, different regions across the country. Um, we will show you our reefer tender reject index, which was recently added to the Sonar platform. And we will finish out the webinar with a 101 training type session to go over um, in a little more specificity the uh, functionality and kind of how to navigate the Sonar data platform uh, for those interested. Um, so with that said, also at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A button. If you have questions along the way, we will open up for a Q&A session at the end of um, this uh, webinar before the 101 session. So as you go through, um, if you'd like to ask any questions, please feel free. Um, and without further ado, the first market that we're going to look at is we're going to look at the tender rejections in the Seattle X market region um, and how I have this currently broken out in the top left, our outbound tender reject index in Seattle X market. Um, we're showing our inbound tender reject in the Seattle X market and we're looking at these on a three month overview and we're also going to uh, for this case, compare the tender lead time and show kind of what, how you can compare tender lead time in association with some tender rejection indexes. Um, so for our first top left, we're seeing the outbound tender reject index in Seattle at an extremely low rate um, at a little over 3%. Um, definitely telling that the volumes here in the middle of the summer are extremely low. Um, as compared to capacity in that region. Like, likewise, on the inbound tender reject, we're seeing a little bit of a spike in um, rejections into the region because of the, the lack of freight coming out. And how we can tie that in as well with our tender lead time um, as we see, which tender lead time for those who don't know is a measure of the time in which a tender is accepted and the actual pickup date. So as we see this tender lead time decrease over the past several days um, to less than a two day tender lead time, as we compare that to our top left chart with the very low decreasing outbound tender reject index, um, that kind of tells us that the uh, shippers in that region know that they're gonna have a little bit of an easier time and ability to to cover freight in that market. So um, that can that is showed with the tender lead time and not necessarily needing to plan that far out in advance. Um, and another reason that I show this tender lead time is the tender lead time can be also kind of the exact opposite with a very short tender lead time um, can also be telling of a very high tender reject in a region where you may see extreme high volumes and uh, constriction or a restriction of, of capacity in that area, um, causing the lead time to be very much lower because uh, shippers in a region are having a rough time uh, to cover their freight. So that's why I show these together. So as you see the, volatil the volatility spikes in one way or another, it's just another, um, form or a data set to look at in comparison to see what's actually happening within a market. Um, so that's our Seattle market, what we're seeing um, over the past few days. We're going to next transition into our newer reefer tender reject, which is um, how this data is input here on the right chart. Um, is all reefer equipment, so specified by equipment in the, we're showing mapping the Miami X market region right now. And what we're seeing here in this 
three months time frame as we um, see here at the beginning of May and the end of April, as we saw an extreme increase or heightened increase um, from roughly around 30% tender reject index for our reefer equipment all the way up to a 45 to 50% in uh, mid-May um, is very telling of, of kind of the end of our South American produce season and our Mother's Day flower shipments um, there was extreme high volumes of reefer freight coming out of that region, and that shows here in the reefer tender reject index. And as we see, you know, kind of the end of, of those two seasons or coming down that way as we see uh, our tender reject, which still significant amount of tender rejects um, in that area from a reefer standpoint, but we see it start to come down from that uh, those be end of April, beginning May, um, that spike there. Um, and as we co would like to compare that as well to the overall outbound tender reject index in Miami in that same time frame, you can see how you can lay these uh, indices side by side and determine um, how much a particular market is affected by a particular equipment type. Um, so pretty valuable information when we're talking about different produce seasons or um, specifically geographical regions that um, we'll see a lot of uh, seasonal um, effects to their market. Um, so from there, we're going to next take a look at actually on a pretty interesting um, trend that we're seeing out of California right now in our Ontario California X market region. What we are mapping here is a outbound tender rejection index in the Ontario X market and an inbound tender reject as well on the right. And um, typically, if we zoom in here, um, we'll go on a three month basis. If we look here in our April, uh, we look here in our April mid-April numbers, um, we typically will see a, when we have an increase in inbound tender reject, we'll uh, see kind of in the coming days, a increase in our outbound tender rejection index due to less trucks uh, willing to uh, go into that market or at least at that, that price they're being offered. Uh, whereas now we're kind of seeing these two numbers or these percentages of tender rejections mirror each other, which is, a little more telling of the stabilization of that um, Cal that Southern California market and kind of the supply and demand that we're seeing a little bit more of a um, equilibrium point from the uh, volume and capacity in that area uh, where it was extremely low in the uh, previous, previous months. Um, from there, we're going to look at a, another reefer tender reject index in the Macon, Georgia X market, just south of the Atlanta X market. And what we're seeing there is um, a volatile spike here in the last couple of days in the beginning of June. And what we're showing or what we're trying to map there as it compares to the outbound tender reject index and we see a little bit more stability over the the previous couple days is the um, kind of the summer months and the value of, of reefer equipment in um, these markets and the amount of freight that is that was previously dry along with produce um, a lot more freight that we're seeing need needs a uh, reefer equipment so that is being represented here as we break out our reefer tender reject index and compare alongside with our outbound tender reject um, which shows across all equipment types there and from there we are going to look at our trucks in market um, heat map and for that one, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Brad Hill, who's going to explain this one in a little more detail um, to you all here and tell you how we come up with this number and what exactly it's telling you. So I'll hand it over to 
um, the other brad here hey so trucks and market uh just to explain this one a little bit um, we basically take the number of trucks in a given market and compare that to at the beginning of a day and compare that to um, the previous two weekdays, if that makes sense. So today being Wednesday, we take the number of trucks in a market this morning, compare it to last Wednesday and the Wednesday before. And the number that you're seeing uh, in any of these given markets is basically the comparison between uh, today and the previous two weeks. And this is really showing kind of trends within markets on um, how many trucks are within a market, and then again, obviously compared to the past two weeks. So that's why we're seeing kind of in uh, California, you're seeing these high trucks and market numbers, basically uh, from the produce that's being produced there, uh, a couple other things going on over there. And then Florida, obviously a big produce state, but it looks pretty small in trucks and market. And that's because of the Mother's Day spike that was mentioned earlier by Brad, the other Brad. Um, so a, a little bit more to explain on this number specifically though uh, if you hover over any of these markets you're going to see the trucks and market number to be a percentage sometimes a little bit above sometimes a little bit below 100 percent so for instance this one's 88 percent so um, obviously this one is lower than the past two weeks like we said florida really got hit by mother's day um, so we're seeing it really low uh, compared to some of these over in California, we see San Francisco, for instance, has 108. So uh, the best way to explain these numbers is look two weeks ago on Wednesday, say there were just for simple numbers, 95 trucks two Wednesdays ago. And then last week, there were 105 trucks in that same market. So the average over the past two weeks is 100. So in this instance, San Francisco at the beginning of the day had 108 trucks. And obviously those are not the real numbers for the number of trucks. That's just to explain how that kind of looks uh, in terms of percentages. So really interesting stuff here. You can kind of see uh, where trucks kind of are accumulating in any given market um, in, in the region specifically. Um, so very interesting, very telling uh, in certain cases, you can really you know, compare this to maybe the outbound uh, tenor rejection index. You can compare this to some of the other indexes that we have, have created uh, and honestly some, some other uh, rates and that kind of thing and, and pull some insight from that. Um, so not much more to say on that. Uh, you can look at trucks and market through time, uh, but right now we just got it on the map. So. Um, I'll kick it back over to Brad to if he wants to show Missoula or any of the other things that he's got going on. So, uh, thanks. Okay. Thanks, Brad. Um, yeah, so we're going to move forward and look at a couple more markets here before we um, open up for questions. It looks like we already have a few there that we'll address here in a few minutes. And if you, of course, have any questions as we've uh, gone along here, um, feel free to, to ask them. Um, so I'm gonna kind of stick with the reefer tender reject index here for one more look and I'm going to pull this over here and we're going to look at the Syracuse, New York X market, which is, that is not Syracuse, New York market. So let me pull that up and any of these our reefer tender reject index is RTRI. Then you put a period dot um, the uh, airport code that you're searching. So in this case, Syracuse SYR. Um, and what we are looking at here on the left, and we'll compare here on the right um, to a the overall across all equipment in the Syracuse region, Syracuse, New York of the tender rejections and we'll look at the last three months here on uh, both of them and what this uh, is telling us here and then somewhat maybe obscure market to you listeners um, in Syracuse, New York, um, but just kind of showing the uh, value um, for a reefer right now as we're in the summer as you see an extremely low uh, turndown rate for, for reefers in that region being that there's not a lot of reefer freight or producer producers in that um, region that, uh, you know, of course, things still need to deliver there. We still need to send 
uh, reefer equipment into that region, uh, but the need to get out and to get to those regions where we can maximize the value of that equipment um, during this time frame here in the summer and produce seasons are, are in full swing. Um, we're seeing a very low uh, rejection rate um, as many of our reefer equipment are trying to get out of there as fast as possible, basically. And as we can compare that to our to our overall tender reject in Syracuse across all equipments types, you can see a pretty pretty level uh, sticking right around 15, 16 percent over the last couple um, days. And, and a couple of weeks down around 14%. So not quite the um, the dip, I would say, from a 10% to a 6%. So almost um, cut in half on the uh, reefer as we, again, get into full swing of the summer here. Um, and the last, last market we're gonna look at here is our Missoula, Montana markets. And what we're gonna look at here is our outbound tender rejections on the left in Missoula X market um, as it compares with our inbound and kind of where we, if you remember, we compared earlier in this webinar, the um, Ontario, California markets and how they were um, mirroring each other from, a, uh, from an increase standpoint in the uh, percentage of tender rejections as we look at here, is kind of, this is a little more typical um, of what we'll see in and out of a region. As you see, um, not a lot happening here in Missoula, Montana from a volume standpoint as it compares to capacity. So we have an extremely low 3% tender rejection rate out of that area. And on the flip side here, we've seen about a doubled our percentage from 10, 11% to almost a 20% inbound tender rejection. Um, so we're mapping there anything delivering into that Missoula, Montana um, market. Um, so just telling of, of the volume there in that region as it compares to the capacity and kind of the, the movement of uh, trucks in that area. And with that, we're going to kind of conclude our look into different markets here on the Sonar dashboard. Um, we do have a few questions here. Um, so I'm going to get to first Jack Gray, who is asking what's going on with the Joplin, Joplin excuse me, and Fayetteville X markets. I noticed a high increase in trucks in the market over the last two weeks and also a big increase in rejects. And to Jack, I would say there's actually an article on freightways.com um, examining the Missouri Valley, um, the Missouri Valley area of the country, which is right in line with that Joplin Fayetteville X markets. And what we saw, which I'll actually pull those up in a map form so everyone else here can see exactly what what Jack is witnessing on our first pull up a tender reject and as you can see that area that I'm circling with the mouse here um, is an extreme dark color and if I pull up our map here another map as well and I think we said trucks in market over the last two weeks has had a big increase so pull up trucks and market as well. And again, we can kind of see as we zoom in um, uh, quite a, a bit of activity there on the heat map in those regions. And as from a trucks and market standpoint, Jack, as, as Brad, our data, our senior data analyst um, noted, so those are based on average of the previous two weeks. So I'm um, just showing that there's a lot more trucks um, in that region from the previous two weeks on average. As far as outbound tender reject, um, the article on our website goes a lot further into detail on the exact um, reason that we believe that we're seeing such high rejection rate in those areas. And it has to do with uh, kind of a lot of freight in that area needed to be moved and refrigerated trucks and a lot of that capacity is being sucked out into produce markets like Florida, California, 
Um, so kind of having an effect on the middle of the country there. Also, that article will reference, um, it references kind of grain, different issues with grain and silos in those areas and, and how they need to be refrigerated or held in different areas of the country that are cooler. So they're being removed from that Central Plains region. Um, and again, I'll reference you to this article, Jack. I'll follow up directly with you and I can share that article um, to give you a little more detail as to why we're seeing the exact, um, exactly what you're asking. But essentially the high level overview is, has a lot to do with uh, reefers, the need for reefers in that area and kind of them being um, sucked out and taken into different regions of the country. Um, and I've got a few, Questions from Glenn that I'll, Glenn, I think I'm going to address your questions here at the end when we kind of go over um, some of the functionality of the platform and just kind of a, a 101 type um, overview. Um, we have from Patrick, is the delta or the percentage of rejections more important in terms of spot market price volatility? Um, and I, to that, Patrick, I would say yes. The what you want to pay attention to is the volatile spikes up or down in these tender rejections. Um, and each market, if I pull up a chart here, will have different, if you want to say norms or more consistent um, rejection percentages. Um, and I would also um, encourage you to have a outbound tender reject index um, showing the entire U.S. so you can kind of compare alongside. Um, but if we want to look at something like a some reason of the, of the country, more desolate areas like a Montana or North Dakota or Western Nebraska, and I'll pull up here so you can see a little bit better in these areas, um, I would say it's, it's not uncommon or this to be an extremely low number on an average basis, 12, 10%, and a little more higher in higher volume areas like Dallas, Atlanta, um, Chicago, um, Southern California, it's a little more common for us to be closer to that 20, 15 to 20, 25% within reason. Um, but yet again, it, it is more important to examine and look at the change and seeing what's happened in, in that actual specific market and kind of taking action once you're seeing those volatility, um, that volatile action, I guess I should say. Um, and then we have a question. And if that doesn't answer your question, Patrick, if you wanna ask another one, follow up, please do. Um, Ed, is there a way to access the raw data we are currently um, inputting or adding to the platform ways for our users to uh, have API uh, capabilities. So you definitely will have the ability to do that as we release later versions. We're targeting closer to the end of summer, early fall, when that will be um, fully released. We have a few indices and uh, that we're still adding to this uh, first full release that we'll do once the beta test is over June 30th. So there's still a few things that we have charted um, or slated to add. And once we kind of get those out, then we'll uh, have the uh, full API capabilities where you will be able to download or access, overlay, compare your own internal data with ours. Um, so yes, that is those capabilities will definitely be there and um, available for you. Um, and then we have a few, I still have Glenn's questions. I didn't forget about you. Um, if we have any more related to, um, what we've gone over thus far, please, um, ask those now. If not in a couple minutes or probably about a minute, we'll get started on just a quick overview of the platform and how to navigate it. Um, and how to edit your screens, how to create your own custom pages, and things of that sort. So I'll leave it open here for about one more minute, and then we'll get started on that.
So before we go or get started on the 101 session, we have another question here. Are you able to discuss where the data comes from um, in instances where we are um, using third party data that will be listed on the indice or in the platform, you will be able to see that um, in instances where we are showing you a proprietary indice based on several different um, data sources. We have uh, agreements with those partners where we cannot release the actual um, information as far as where it comes from, or sorry, not the actual information, but how we, um, or who the partners are, I should say. As far as where it comes from, we are mapping with these tender reject indexes. Um, we're mapping electronic um, tenders um, from various providers um, through contracted freight. If that answers your question, um, or if it doesn't, if you want to ask another one, please feel free. If not, we will get started here. And I think that actually looks like I saw another question from Glenn that should probably answer your first question. Um, your second one. Well, first I'll go and well, I'll answer that, I'll answer that one actually. Our biggest question when we log in, there is none of this data. How do we set up the markets and truck type data we'd like to monitor? So um, depending on what you'd like to monitor, um, a pretty easy, so your custom, your original dashboard will be, will be here where you'll have the four different views. You'll have your map widget and chart, which we um, went over and I kind of showed you in the webinar. Um, you also have a news feed here, which is currently showing um, weather and I believe mainly weather, tech crunch, and I think DC velocity is on there and, and rotors. Um, you'll have the ability if you click here on the right to edit the screen and add or um, take away any um, news that you would like. And each one of these, um, each one of these new sources is exportable. So you will be able to actually go to the actual site. We're looking at a flood warning in Eastern Washington, Northern Idaho. Um, so whether it's an article or kind of a news flash like that, you will be able to do such. Um, in terms of monitoring data, um, I would probably refer you to a watch list form and you can customize your watch list. So currently what we are looking at on this watch list is on the left, we're looking at JB Hunt, Heartland, uh, Martin, um, Schneider, Werner, stock prices. Um, you can actually, and then we have LTL on the top and 3PL on the bottom right. You can actually map um, freight waves or sonar's proprietary indices on here. So if I X out of uh, these watch lists here um, or add, maybe I want to add another watch list here and make it my own, you can click here on this pencil, this edit button, and if you want to add, let's say, a tender reject index, use the acronym OTRI, a period there. Let's say we want to look at Atlanta. We will put that in. We will add that. Let's add a few more for um, to make it look a little better for us here. And make sure you hit the add button so it actually shows up in this view with the X, red X next to it. Uh, we'll add one more. We'll add an inbound tender reject here um, as well. So that acronym is ITRI. And let's look at just throw Chicago in there. So we'll add, we've added our four um, sonar indices here. So I would say this would be a good way to, um, this would be a good way to keep an eye and look at an overview or high level overview. You can actually um, these will be these change and percent changes in open, high, and low will be available here in the coming weeks on a daily basis as the, um, the data is updated. Um, you can go straight into a chart form here. If you see, for example, you know, Chicago outbound tender reject index has changed by 
three or four percent over the past day or two. I want to see what's going on there. I'll click on the chart form and that will export me into a into an actual chart there and you can look at it in that form. Um, got a few more questions coming in that I'll address here in a second. Um, so hopefully Glenn that gives you a little better idea of how to set that up in terms of saving these screens as you edit them. We're gonna, you're gonna go here to this on the left side under my pages. You're gonna go down below that to edit pages. Click here to add a page. We'll name this one. One for you here. And that will populate your page here. You again have the ability to edit that order. If you hit edit again, we can click and drag. Let's say you wanna bring this down. Look at it here, save our changes. Now, once we go into Glenn's page, because we just created it, there's nothing there. So you're gonna get this blank screen. That's where you're gonna go in this bottom right-hand corner to this blue plus sign. And here's where all of your widgets, your available widgets will show up. So we can maybe throw in one of those watch lists, which again is gonna give you a blank screen because you haven't added anything in there yet. So we'll add something there just to populate it as we go through. We'll save that. So we have a watch list. Let's add maybe a chart function to our screen. We'll look at maybe an inbound ITRI, tender rejection index for Chicago market as well. Um, and if we want to maybe look at a map as well, again, click that plus sign, click on the widget you would like to add, um, and you can sort by the top right corner, the indice you'd like to look at. So maybe um, you'd like to look at the diesel truck stop actual price per gallon, which is going to list or show based on a heat map, the um, price per gallon on average in these defined regions. It's a little hard to view there. So you can actually click on this map one and you can adjust the size or the way in which you'd like to view that. So we'll turn it into a, a little more of a horizontal view. Um, and maybe we'll close down this, this map widget a little bit because we don't have much on there. Um, so you can kind of move things around as you like. So let's say Glenn has his page. He likes how it looks now. Um, go back to our edit pages and we want to save this change. So when you do leave that screen, you, we will be able to come back. Let's say you went to your one of your other my pages it will bring you back to this original screen um so hopefully that um, better explains we have a question here as well about just accessing the platform having a hard time getting things to display properly on um, in firefox uh, much better access in chrome in chrome excuse me um Definitely a case by case basis, I'd say. If you are having issues, if you click here under your name on the top right, if you just click on this contact us button, um, put in your email address, write your message. This will go to our help desk at FreightWaves, which is myself and our sonar team. And we'll be able to address that issue right away for you. Um, is this what uh, we have someone saying we're they're having issues editing or adding to a page. So again, make sure you're not on this default page. Make sure you're not adding to um, these default pages because they are set and they are they will not change for you. Make sure you're going to my pages and you're going through the edit as we just went over there. And if if uh, that does not answer your questions ed please let me know i'm not sure if we went over that already when you asked that question or not um let's see we have a question here so we have a question are is there a place with all the acronyms and their definition there is that's what i was just about to get to for you our knowledge center right under the contact us a function if you click on that that will take you to an external link and we actually have here our sonar index guide and as you saw below that the um, indices 
the acronyms. And this, so this is actually going to be a complete guide for you. If we look here on the left hand side, um, list our table of contents. Um, so you can see what all of the available indices are, the available commodity flows. Um, at the very bottom here, I think we have the acronyms available for you, as you can see. Um, and in the appendix B, we have the actual airport codes listed for you as well. And those also we have our index codes um, on this hyperlink um, for you to get up there a little faster so you don't have to um, scroll down on that previous page. But everything will be listed. Again, if you go through to your top right, click on your name, drop down screen, go to our Knowledge Center, it will take you to this page. The Sonar Index Guide will show you all the information you need and the index code definitions will just give you a quick overview of uh, what those stand for. Um, Okay, so yeah, we're good on the my pages. I see that you can. Yeah, so we had one question. It looks like um, kind of answered itself. Um, you will have the ability to um, to drill down to these regions um, individually uh, at a market level. Um, so by region that you see, let me get a little bigger view for you guys. Um, so currently we have the X market region defined by these geographic regions. We will have, as you see in this top, top uh, corner, the X market drop down. When you click on that in the um, coming um, additions, we will have the ability to go into a little more um, granular drill down by three digit zip codes for a lot of these indices. So if you're interested in a little closer look in maybe in LA or San Francisco or a heavy metropolitan uh, market, you will have the ability to um, get a little closer look at, um, as opposed to some of these larger X market regions. Um, and from there, so we went over your knowledge center, contact us. Um, I believe that's about it from the 101. If anyone else has questions that they'd like to ask, we'll open it here for a few more minutes. Um, and I'll kind of, as, as we're waiting there, I'll do one last quick overview of our screen by screen through the dashboard and how you can access each indice. Um, if you, in the top right corner here from a heat map standpoint, you can access all of our proprietary indices and any commodity flows you may be interested in seeing. So I'm gonna click on an agriculture, cereal, uh, animals and meat. So you will actually be able to see based on weekly data um, when markets are um, starting to kind of heat up and produce more and increase in volumes in that region. And these will be listed by by tons um, for the commodity flows. Um, again, you can look at any of the proprietary indices, our hours of service, daily driving utilization, hours of service, daily on duty utilization, all available via the map. Um, also, the map is a good place to just hover over any region. And when you see, uh, I'm sure you've seen this white um, pop-up screen that comes here that will give you a view of everything that's available um, in that region as well. So just to, you know, maybe you see something there on the heat map that you haven't seen before and you can go from there into maybe a chart and um, look at the chart view as well. And again, from our, I'll go to our chart here as we're waiting possibly on a few um, last second questions. And I don't think we went over quite yet the compare function. If uh, some of you are new to um, the dashboard and haven't um, had a live demo or haven't used it quite yet, um, all of our indices are available um, to compare alongside um, with each other and across geographical regions. So let's say I would like to 
Um, and where I get this crosshair from that you're looking at to kind of show me um, what a, the exact value is, is up here on the right, this little cross. Um, we can go here if we want to compare, sorry, back to compare. And let's say we were looking at outbound tender reject index and we want to compare the national average to, or the national turndown reject index to um, Rockford X markets. Then we'll see um, the Rockford is listed here in this light blue line and how this data is represented in the compare um, in this compare function is an absolute zero of the time frame. So as you can see, um, these numbers on the right, we're looking at a negative 4% and a negative 32%. So what that's telling you is from October, it looks like 16th is our time frame. The outbound tender reject index in the United States has gone down 4%. Um, in comparison, the Rockford, Illinois markets in that same time frame has gone down 32%. So if you're a little confused, let's say you zoom in, and as you can see, those numbers are changing. That is because they're based on the um, absolute zero in that time frame. So if you want them by actual percentages, you can just look at one by one and bring up a chart and look side by side, kind of how we were doing when we were looking at markets in the, um, at the beginning of the webinar. So I look there for you. Um, Then a little bit more into the charts here as well. You have the ability from to change your views. If you go into the displays, um, another one that looks nice here is a baseline graph, which this is going to show you again based on um, the starting point. It's going to show you a decrease in the red, and uh, we're looking at the U.S. tender reject index, and of course the green um, above that. Uh, original percentage of 24 back in, it looks like we're looking at uh, February 24th. So a different way you can look at that. Um, we were looking at mountain, which is the default setting. Um, some other ones here, line, um, I prefer personally mountain. It looks a little bit nicer when you're um, comparing. And in your compare function as well, if we throw another, we throw Atlanta up here, um, you have the ability to run studies. Um, so we can run uh, our Bollinger Band study if you're a little more interested in, in kind of the uh, fancy features of Sonar. We have that availability for you. Um, and I think that is about all we have here. If anyone has any last second questions, I know we went over the watch list and how you add those um with this edit pencil here um i think that's about all uh, we have a question um when will the trading platform be live um not 100 percent sure on that one i do have your email i can get back to you directly um on that um, with a little more firm date for you Anyone else will kind of leave it open here for two more minutes, maybe. If anyone else has a question, we'll be here to answer. Um, otherwise, thank you for listening in. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, again, go to our drop down screen um, under the contact us email. I'm sure many of you have my email, Michael Vincent or Tim Brownell, our Sonar account team. Um, so if you want to uh, message us directly as well, that is that is fine. Um, otherwise, thank you for listening in, and we'll be here a few more minutes for questions if you have any. Thank you.
So we've got a couple questions about forecasting and I guess predictive modeling in general. Uh, that is coming up. We're working on it for sure right now. And we've got, uh, there, there'll be a couple options for that for sure. Um, how that's gonna look within the platform, we're not 100% on yet, but once we get there, we'll let you guys know. Um, so that's where we are on the forecasting. A couple other things that will be coming up in Sonar relatively soon. Um, as the other Brad was mentioning on the maps, um, the regions, I know someone had asked about aggregating those and obviously we have USA, so like you can see otri.usa or tlt.usa, but uh, here in the next couple of weeks, we'll definitely have some options available for larger regions, uh, you know, Southeast, West Coast, that kind of thing. So uh, that will be coming up as well. Um, so hopefully that answers a couple of things about what's coming up. So we, we have another question here. Will the exchange be limited to end user participation or open to speculators? Um, this platform is, is open to anyone. Um, so when that functionality is available and um, ready to go on the platform, you will be able to do so um, no matter who you are or what organization you work for, I guess I would say. Hopefully that answers your question. If not, um, please reply back for me and uh, I'll try to uh, answer in a different way if need be. Okay, with that, um, I believe we're going to wrap it up. Again, if you have any additional questions, um, you can contact us direct if you have our emails. If not, you'll reach a couple, uh, one of three of us on this Contact Us feature on the platform. Um, again, thank you for listening in. Thank you for the questions. Um, and uh, we'll see you next week, Wednesday at 2 p.m. Thanks.